Howdy again there YouTube. Back with another episode of Airgotten Weapons. Thanks for joining me today. I'd like to talk to you about the DMR in Airsoft and how I don't think it is really a thing and why I don't think it's really a thing. So the concept of the DMR, the designated marksman rifle, is that you've got somebody in your squad that has some optics ability, you know, some extra stability platform, etc, etc. You guys can look into it all you want. But for airsoft, it really doesn't apply. And I'll tell you why. You've got your airsoft snipers. And that's an entirely different animal in and to themselves. Those guys are nut, nut jobs as far as I'm concerned. Because you're sitting there in a field of a full automatic fire with something that you're not going to be able to return fire with if they notice where you're at. Of course, if they notice where you're at, you're not a very good sniper. So that is what it is. But it's supposed to bridge the gap between something like this, just a regular battle rifle, and this. But as you can see, overall lengthwise, you're not that much shorter. Weight-wise, it's actually heavier because it's an AEG. Granted, it does have a very snappy semi-auto function, but without all this extra garbage on it, it would still have that. So... Granted, you know, you're getting, I'm getting about 490 feet per second out of this guy. And this one I'm getting 390 feet per second. And this one's 330. Of course, I could make this one 390 easy enough. I could easy enough put an optic on this one. So, what is this one doing other than weighing a bunch more? A lot longer in weight. Of course, you got your suppressor and all that fancy schmancy stuff on it. And your rail system and everything that people have grown to, to love, you know, as an armchair soldier, but in the field, you're much better off with something you can lug around all day. You know, this isn't real warfare here we're talking about. This isn't, you know, milsim is milsim, I suppose, just how far you want to take it. Do you, I mean, do you want to take it one-to-one? -one? Then you're talking about, you know, real capacity magazines, etc 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 so for I would imagine the majority of airsoft players building something like this is just gonna be a waste of time and money it's just gonna be something that you play around with too heavy to lug around too much of a hassle to uh, deal with finding you know mid cap mags etc so I do really like this rifle but I don't know that I would ever play with it, just for the reasons mentioned. I think I'd be a nut job with this, or just be a maniac with this. And I'd have a lot more fun. So that's just my personal opinion. I'm sure you have your own opinion as far as that goes. Everyone seems to when it comes to DMRs nowadays. So I figured I'd build one, and this is it. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time. Oh, you didn't come here for a rant? You wanted to look at the rifle? Okay, I'll take you through it. It's a JG Mark 58, I guess based on the Enterprise Arms commercial FAL. This one has the full auto. Not sure if the King Arms SLR has full auto. I guess if it's a real copy it shouldn't, but it probably does. It's got the light and sand cuts in the bolt. It's a blowback. Uh, not really useful for the DMR roll, but it's just been around the house, so not really an issue. I've got the four railed forearm and this is kind of a pain in the butt to install but you just use a dremel and some patience and you can figure it out i've got a standard foregrip the a well 4400 series bipod on here just because that's what i had i've got the aac 51 tooth suppressor and flash hider combo on there it's got an angel custom 6.01 stainless barrel inside and it's really an accurate setup so that's the front end there I've got this knockoff Trigicon ACOG which isn't great I wouldn't recommend it it's got the fiber optic inside but even in full sunlight it's not like a real one by any stretch of the imagination and it's still this tan color because I got it for an auction on an auction for a real good price so that might be why it's broken also and it's not really even tuned to the trajectory of the rifle whatsoever. 
so that doesn't really matter. I've got uh, a really nice maple leaf hop-up bucking in there as well. Um, I turned this charging handle because the stock one is a plastic button and it's really sucky. So rather than having it break in the field, well, never have taken it, but if I were to, I would be afraid that that part would break. So I just went ahead and made one. I've got an ASG 40K motor in this one, Infinity CNC. I really like those motors. If you've seen my G3 video, I talk about that a little bit. And you'll say, oh, well, you want a high torque setup in a DMR. But, you know, you build it your way, I'll build it my way. This thing's still 390 feet per second, which for where I play is as fast as they'll let me do anyway. So I've hogged out and taken off the plate on the butt so that I can fit a 7.4 LiPo in there. And that's pretty easy to do. I would suggest you doing that if you have one of these because the little hatch hole that they make stock is not sufficient to fit any kind of decent capacity battery in there. <clears throat> it's almost like they made it for a, a stick or something. So those are just some of the modifications I made to this. Like I said, I don't have the King Arms version. I kind of wish I did because I really like the way it looks with the standard full-length military front handguard. I'd really like to turn one into a G1 one day. So I'll just have to keep my eye out. Maybe I'll find one with a broken gearbox. That's usually how I find stuff like that. So these screws, these that are supposed to be, you know, they kind of look like they're fake. They're not fake. And they actually back out really easily because of the blowback system so loctite those because even just messing around i almost lost one so and they're a weird size like three and a half millimeters with a big head so don't lose them other than that i really like the gun it's just a little heavy for my style of playing and a little bit too long to uh you know run around with so there it is if you we're itching for some more from the first version. We're disappointed. There's your, there's your review. So, thanks for watching. See you next time. And for today's extra content, I've got this kind of cool North American Aviation announces the P82 Twin Mustang. Air power is peace power. Love it. Anyway, this was from my grandfather's estate. Some of the stuff that was disposed of after. My grandmother died. This wasn't particularly well cared for, unfortunately. But it's got some great photographs in it of the twin Mustang. Not sure if this is a rare book or not. I think it's kind of cool, so that's why it survives to this day. Otherwise it probably would have gotten thrown away with the rest of the damaged items. Views. I believe there's a cutaway as well in here. Yeah, there it is. Pretty neat. So, even though it's not in the greatest condition, it's still a good reference for myself and possibly somebody else in the future. Well, with that, I bid you adieu.